Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of the sip and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. In the Gospel according to John, Jesus' passion and death are emphasized more often than in the other Gospel accounts. It is also in John that we hear more poetic and more mystical language around the divinity of Christ. And Jesus himself in the garden, confronted by soldiers and police, affirms that he is the one that they seek, the great I am. Jesus carries the cross himself, and his final words are, it is finished. Throughout this heart-wrenching passion narrative, Jesus remains in control, powerful, divine, reprimanding Peter and speaking words of instruction to his mother and the beloved disciple. And as he maintains his glory to the very end, those in his midst remain culpable, seemingly unmoved by the power of his presence. How can this be, we ask ourselves each year on this solemn day? None of us would have done what Judas did, right? or what Peter did, or Pilate, or the chief priests. None of us would have cried out to crucify him, would we? As Christians, we hold fast to the claim that God is love. We affirm this in our prayers and in our steadfast faith and belief. God is love. And yet, do we not crucify love every day? Do we not allow power to displace love even in so many small ways? Is there not something in each of us that is a Judas, a Peter, a Caiaphas, a Pilate? How many times have we chosen the easier and more popular response instead of the more just and loving and thus more difficult way? It is important to inquire of ourselves. Where are we in the story? And as we place ourselves in the story, we examine ourselves more carefully on this day. And yet, there is more to this story that we can discover in ourselves. Is there also not a part of us who is Mary, standing at the foot of the cross, absorbing the pain and the suffering not betraying or condemning or mocking him, but standing beside him and bearing the sacrificial love and holding the hope of comfort and the strength for the days ahead? Is there not something in each of us that also bears the deepest thread of love, that eternal spark that the Gospel of John affirms when we are named children of light? It is there. And it is in the brokenness of the cross that we find it. 
because the cross always points beyond the cross. Jesus from the cross points beyond the cross to his mother and the beloved disciple. Woman, here is your son, and here is your mother. The suffering and the brokenness of the cross is not the end, but the catalyst for the opening of our hearts. Perhaps this is the better way to understand the savior of the world, shifting our emphasis a bit from Jesus died for our sins to the cross of Christ breaks open our hearts for the transforming of the world. Atonement is at one. The ark that reaches the fullness of the Eucharistic heart, the heart of God offered to us all. On this day, I cannot help but hear the words of Leonard Cohen, so influenced by his religious upbringing in the song anthem. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. You can add up the parts, but you won't have the sum. You can strike up the march. There is no drum. Every heart, every heart to love will come. On Palm Sunday, I ended my sermon by saying that our hearts are broken to make room for one another. Today, as we drop into the depths of darkness with our Lord, may our breaking hearts send forth the light of Christ from the deepest place within us. May we find in ourselves the stance of Mary watching intently as our beloved cracks open the world for its ultimate transformation. May every heart come to love. May every heart come to love. Amen.